All right, recording has started. Uh, folks, welcome. This is uh, just a little bit of a GitHub workshop for the open organization ambassadors at opensource.com. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm going to uh, just walk through a couple of basics regarding GitHub. Uh, we moved here, as you know, our community moved here recently uh, as a sort of a public home base so we could work more transparently, work more in the open. Uh, and that's what uh, we're going to do. And I have uh, just a couple of notes here on some GitHub basics that we can review because some of the ambassadors expressed an interest in learning a little bit more about our home. So I've got some notes over here I'm going to go through uh, and we'll just cover the basics. Um, but the first thing that I want to say is that GitHub really is uh, a public uh, issue tracker at heart, and that's why we're using it. Uh, so uh, Chad Whitaker, uh, one of the open organization ambassadors, just wrote an article about this that we'll be publishing in a couple weeks. Um, but the notion here is that using a public issue tracker allows uh, people to see what you're doing, how you're doing it, and why you're doing it in public uh, every step of the way. And so uh, uh, using GitHub as an issue tracker allows us to keep our work uh, out there, allows us to keep us, keep us accountable for the work that we're doing, uh, and it allows us to uh, have a common point of reference when we're talking to each other and, and talking to newcomers that we can link to and show them what we're doing in public with no walls. So we use GitHub for that tool. Uh, and so when you go to GitHub, at github.com, you'll see the opening screen here. Uh, you'll need an account to participate. Uh, so at the top of the screen, you can either sign in or sign up. I have an account, so I will go ahead and sign in. And when you sign in, you see a couple of things right on the landing page of GitHub. Uh, GitHub functions as sort of a social network for coders. So you've got some uh, social elements to GitHub, some things that keep you connected to your network, the people who you're following or the people who you're watching, the people who, with whom you're connected online. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you will see uh, a bunch of folks, uh, a bunch of activity from folks that I follow. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is one of our ambassadors, uh, Huron, is doing some stuff. And you can see his profile here which demonstrates you know, sort of one of the social uh, elements of GitHub, that you can follow folks who are doing, activity and do, do, doing activities and doing work, uh, contributing uh, to different projects. So I follow Huron and I see some of his activities. It looks like he's started some repositories, he's made some contributions. We can also see down here that Ambassador Robin Mulwick, uh, who's on the call today, is also doing some stuff. Uh, and he has commented on an issue uh, related to some open organization ambassador work. So you just get an overview of what's been going on in your network, which is kind of nice. On the right, you see uh, a list of all the repositories that you contribute to. And uh, we'll talk about repositories in a minute. Uh, and you also see a listing of the things that you sort of own, that you have ownership of. So uh, that's just what you see when you first log in. So the, what we're gonna do uh, first is talk about some basic terminology and basic nomenclature on GitHub. Sort of the, the primary unit of functionality on GitHub is what's called a repository. And it might be a little uh, bit of a gross generalization to say a repository is like a folder, but uh, in essence, that's what we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and um, visit the Open Organization Ambassadors page on GitHub, which is github.com slash open-organization-ambassadors. When you go there, uh, you'll see a couple things, the title of the repo, uh, title, or title of the repos, I should say here, uh, the people who are contributing to our little group on uh, GitHub, and then a list of these things called repositories. And really a repository is a place where you keep all the files and the work related to a specific project that you're doing. So uh, one of the things that the ambassadors have been working on lately, for example, is the open organization definition. Uh, and these are listed here in the order uh, in which they've been most recently updated. So seven days ago, somebody made some changes to the open organization definition, and so that is the most recently updated repository, and it's at, it's at the top. So a repository, again, is a place where you store your files uh, that are related to different projects. And since, since this is a major project for the ambassadors, we created a, our own repository for it. So inside this repository, when you click on it, 
you'll see several things. The first and foremost, what you'll see is uh, a list of all the files that are related to this project. Um, and what GitHub does it, when you create a repository is it automatically looks for a file called readme. And that, then what it does is it reproduces that readme file down below. And so it's important, as uh, one of our writers said just this past week on uh, the open organization section of opensource.com, to have a very uh, concise uh, and explanatory readme file so that people who are coming to your repository uh, can understand what your project is about and what you're trying to do. And that's what this uh, file does. It explains what the project is. So this explains a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, and it shows the current version of the open organization definition when it was last updated and things of that nature. Uh, inside a repository, not only do you see a list of files, but you can see a list of other things as well. Uh, we'll start here at the top. The first thing and one of the most important things for the work of the ambassadors is going to be this tab up here at the top called issues. When you click on issues, what you'll see is a list of sort of uh, tickets or discussion items. And you can think of issues as kind of a meta commentary about the files, right? So it's not the files themselves, but it's sort of our discussion about them. And what issues are is there, this is what Ch uh, Chad loves and you'll read in his article is that this is where we can keep track publicly of all the things we uh, note about the files or all our to-do items related to the files or all our questions or concerns or proposals regarding the files. So, uh, for example, you'll see here that for the last couple of days, we've been having a discussion about expanding the definition to include some kind of maturity model. Uh, and this has been a discussion that the ambassadors have been having in earnest over the last couple of days. So when you click that, what you see is an entire conversation related to this particular issue. And people have been you know, sounding off and giving advice and uh, chiming in with their opinions. Uh, and it just flows like a, a regular discussion. And so what this is, is it's an issue or a topic related to the code that's in this repository. And there are other issues as well. So for example, uh, somebody thinks, for example, that we should uh, recruit an amb a new ambassador, somebody who's familiar with uh, the work going on in the so-called sharing economy. So they put this item here so that it's now public uh, and it's now something we can track together. So the important thing to remember about issues is that they can become a sort of uh, focal point for the work that you're doing, a place where discussion happens about the code that you're doing in your repository. So let's take a look at an issue. Let's go back to this issue about expanding the definition with a maturity model. And you can see here that people are responding to my initial post about this idea. Chad did several things. He uh, posted a comment that said, I love this progress. And he also uh, put a thing here, a little emoji, because Chad loves his emojis. Uh, you can respond to the post with emojis by clicking uh, this button here and uh, you know, leaving your feedback. You also see a couple other things that you can do with an issue. Uh, you can subscribe and unsubscribe from it. So that means when, you, uh, when somebody makes an update to the issue, if they leave a comment or post a new file or something like that, you will receive an email about uh, the uh, update to the issue. And the nice thing about GitHub is that when you reply to that email, if you reply to that email from your email client, it automatically adds your reply to the list of uh, conversation items that are going on down here. So you don't even need to necessarily log into GitHub to leave the comment or to leave your response. You can simply reply to the email and it will add it right here to the conversation, which is a nice time saving feature for people who spend a lot of time in email. Where was the follow feature or where, where did you click to? Uh... Sure. If you, uh, to follow the repository or to follow a user? Well, this, this discussion, if I wanted to follow this discussion. Was... Right, so if you want to follow the discussion, there's a button now, I'm subscribed, so that uh, it wants me to unsubscribe, but this button down here, you can click okay. uh, under notifications, and that'll help you follow the discussion. You can also do several things uh, to the repository itself, and I'll get to that in a second, where you can actually follow all activity going on in the repository. This just subscribes you to the issue itself. So if you want to know about this thing, but not all the other conversations that are going on about this repo, uh, which is short for repository, you can do that here. You also see a link or a list of all the people who have contributed so far to this conversation right below that button. So you can quickly see at a glance 
who's participating in this discussion, and several of the open organization ambassadors have already contributed to this discussion. Now, uh, this is the thing that I think most of the ambassadors will use most frequently, so I think it bears lingering on this for just a little bit to show you a couple of uh, features that uh, make interacting with one, an one another really easy. Uh, so, for example, um, you can see here that uh, people have been at mentioning one another. So we'll start with that, as is common uh, parlance, for example, on Twitter. Uh, you can see that people are using at replies, as I did when I mentioned Robin up here, and as I did when I mentioned Sam down here, to call other people out in the repository. Uh, folks who are members of the group and folks who are already contributing to the conversation can be referenced via uh, an at mention. So, for example, I can type uh, great idea, and I'll mention Robin because I know he's on the call today. I can put at and see it automatically uh, populates with some of the folks who are participating in the discussion and some folks who are part of the Open Organization Ambassadors group. Um, so I want to re reference Robin, so I'll say great idea, Robin. Hit that, and it will automatically put Robin's name in there. Uh, and that way, when I commit uh, this comment, when I send it to the group, Robin will get a notification saying, hey, somebody said your name and wants your attention on this issue. Simple, but it's a nice way to uh, get folks to uh, pay attention to what you're saying and to notify them that they're, that they're being talked about or that they're being asked a question so that they don't have to constantly check this or that they might not miss uh, something that's being said. Now, the other thing to know about uh, issues and about GitHub in general is that it's Markdown friendly. And Markdown is simply a, a, a markup language why the name is kind of funny and ironic. It's a markup language for plain text and allows you to, to format your comments and your text uh, really easily using common keyboard uh, characters. So uh, you can do several things. So I can uh, use a hash sign to make um, a headline for an idea. And I can also use uh, asterisks to make bullet items. I can do things like uh, make words emphasized by using underscores on either side of them. And I can also make them bold simply by putting two asterisks on either side of the word. And those, what those things allow you to do is do basic formatting without having to fiddle around with things up here or what have you. And I'll just click, hit preview to see what my comment looks like. And you can see that by including that hash, that hash, I was able to make this headline. By including those asterisks, I was able to make this bulleted list. By including those things, I was able to do this. And so that just helps you make comments more quickly and without having to fiddle around with a lot of uh, formatting and things like that. But the one thing that is really important and really interesting is uh, referencing uh, other resources. So not only can you reference people, you can also reference things that are going on uh, in the repository itself. So uh, as you saw there, when I hit the hashtag, uh, it brought up a list of issues that are going on in the repository. So let's say that we're having a conversation and I want to uh, reference another issue that somebody else has raised. You know, maybe Robin, uh, I say to Robin, that's a great idea. You should see our conversation going on over here because we're also talking about that. I can hit the pound sign and it will show me a list of issues that are going on inside this repository. So uh, let's say uh, I want to reference this issue about recruiting an ambassador from the, econ from the sharing economy universe. I can say, hey, check out issue number five. We're talking about that. And if I just put number five, when I send this comment, you'll see that the hyperlink has automatically been created and it automatically, when you click it, goes to that issue. So simply by saying, hey, check out number five, check out number six, whatever, you can send people to other issues and build on the conversation, pointing people to other work. To find the number of the issue, by the way, you can find it up here in the title and you can also find it up here in the URL. Uh, it's always the last number in the URL. So that's a nice feature uh, that this sort of markdown enhanced environment gives us. What we can also do is we can um, link to things outside the repository or anywhere on the web, and that's very easy as well. Uh, let's say I wanted to link to Huron's biography uh, or his uh, homepage here, his, his bio on GitHub. 
uh, I'll say to Robin, you should contact Kieran. And now let's say to make it easy for Robin, I want to link to Kieran's page. Well, in Markdown, that's really simple. I can do this open bracket character and this closed bracket character on his name to show him that, to show that I want this thing to be clickable. And then you have to tell GitHub, okay, where do I want the person to go when they click Kieran's name? I'll go over here, grab the URL from this window, copy it, put a parenthesis here, put that URL in there, close the parenthesis, and now when I preview this, I'll see that when I send this comment, if I click on Kieran's name or if anybody clicks on Kieran's name, it will go right to his profile on GitHub. And you can do that with any web page on the, on the World Wide Web. So we use this, for example, a lot of times when we are sending people outside GitHub to look at uh, different things. Uh, I did it here, for instance, when I was talking to Lara, and I wanted to reference another issue in another repository. I made that a hyperlink there. And the last important thing to note, uh, something you'll see people doing already in the thread, like Robin and I and Lara to some extent, is quoting and citing one another. And that's also really simple to do. So let's say that I want to respond directly to Robin's comment. And I, the part of his comment that I specifically want to respond to is this one right here. So I'll copy that when I make my response. And I'll say, great idea, Robin. You said. And I'll go down here and I will paste that part of his conversation in here because that's what I want to respond to. It's easy to quote that in my response simply by putting a character right in front. So I do that, put that character there, and now you'll see when I send that comment that it's cited Robin, made it a little bit grayer to show that I'm quoting him at length. Uh, and then I'm responding to this particular part of his comment. And Robin, you can see in this repository, already did that for something that I said. So his is a good example uh, of that. So that's just a little bit of sort of markdown basics, but it's a great way to interact with folks in comments uh, and your fellow ambassadors inside uh, of GitHub. It makes responding and collaborating a lot easier when you know sort of some of those shortcuts, especially the shortcuts for uh, at mentioning one another, mentioning issues like that, uh, and hyperlinking with this character and these characters. So uh, anybody in the, on the call or at the meeting have any questions about this part of, the, of GitHub using issues or working with Markdown? Pardon my uh, reach here while I look at the uh, notes. So as I said before, I think that's really where uh, most ambassadors are going to spend their time, is hanging out in, uh, in issues, talking to one another. But let's say you wanted to do more than that. Let's say you wanted to contribute to, project, to a project. Let's go back here to, again, the open organization definition. This is the home page for this repository. And you can see up here that you can do several things. So Jeff, in response to your earlier question about how you can follow things, that I showed you how you could follow an issue, but this actually show, shows you also how you can sort of follow an entire repository. And you can do that up here by clicking uh, watch or unwatch. When you're watching a repository, you are getting updates about that repository on your uh, homepage in that list, but you're also getting emails when people do things like leave comments on it, or make updates to the files that are in it. So this is really handy uh, for getting notified when people are doing work on a project that you really care about or that you're invested in. So you can click that to watch the repository and that will send you updates when things happen to it. You can also star the repository and starring a repository is really just like bookmarking it. It allows you to make a note of it. You don't get updates about it. You don't receive any um, additional notifications, but it allows you to kind of keep a little a private set of bookmarks on your GitHub account um, uh, of projects that interest you that you might want to go back to. Back to. You'll see that uh, our buddy here, Hiran, is sort of the king of uh, starring projects. He's starred 672 projects on GitHub, things that he's interested in that he might want to come back to later. Uh, and so those are some things you can do up here. Uh, and the other thing you can do is fork the repository. Now, in open source terms, a fork is a copy. 
uh, and it, it's sort of uh, also in GitHub language, you, you might hear some people refer to making a clone of a repository, cloning it. When you fork a repository, you are essentially making a copy of that repository, which is owned by someone else, on your own personal account. So when you click the fork button, it will take this entire repository, all the files that are associated with it, and make a copy on your account so you can make changes to it and mess around with it, play with the code, play with the wording, and not worry about making any permanent changes to the master copy, the one that's sort of the owned by the entire group. And I'll show you that I've done that with the um, open organization definition. We'll go to my profile here, and you can see a bunch of repositories that I've made. I'm gonna go to my repository listing. And here's a copy of the open organization definition repository that I've made because I wanted to update it and make changes to it, but I didn't want those changes to automatically override everything that the group has already done. So I made a fork of it. And when you click this button, it does this neat little animation of the GitHub making a photocopy and putting uh, those files on your own account. And so you can see if you look up here uh, in the top left corner that uh, this is me. I'm semiotic robotic on GitHub and pretty much anywhere else. Uh, and then I've got a new repository in my account called Open Org Definition, which is an exact copy of what you saw in uh, the ambassadors group. And now what I can do is I can use my favorite tool uh, to mess with these files, to make copies of them, to change them. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. We won't cover that in this tutorial, but uh, you can see opensource.com, uh, specifically Seth Kenlon's series on using GitHub to and Git especially uh, for uh, getting some different tools you can use uh, to mess around with GitHub files. But one nice thing about working on a lot of projects with the ambassadors is that much of what we do is text and not code. And so you can actually work with text right in GitHub itself. You don't need to uh, do a lot of other uh, work or use special tools. So. Now I have this copy of the open organization definition in my repository, my own repository. So I'm going to click it, and I'm going to pull up a copy of the file. Now this is, of course, one of the ambassador's largest projects to date, which is making a definition, a working definition of open organization. And you can see that we've outlined the language here, and we've got a nice long text file. Because it's basically text, uh, I can use the uh, GitHub editor to make changes to this file. And I can do that up here in the top right corner by clicking the, the uh, pencil icon. Now what it'll do is it'll bring up an editor. And now instead of uh, it rendered in publishable sort of HTML, it's again bringing the file here in Markdown, which is again that uh, markup language I told you about that you can use uh, in plain text mode to make changes to files. Uh, and so here is the open organiza or organization definition lined up entirely as a markdown document. And I can go through here and I can make changes. Um, you know, I can change the version number. I can change the language. I can play with this file. Uh, and you can see I'm using similar conventions as the ones that I use in comments. Uh, one pound sign for a first order headline, two pound signs for a second order headline. And when it all, uh, when it all comes together, when it looks formatted, it will look very nice uh, in GitHub like this. So let's say I wanted to make a change. Say what I wanted to do is I don't like the word characteristics. So I'm going to say um, I think we should call these qualities of an open organization, not characteristics. So I'm going to go ahead and say I think that is uh, what I'd like to do. And I might go through and do some other work. The next thing I have to do is I have to uh, commit that change, right? So GitHub works with what's called version control, and it keeps versions of files and a history of those versions so that at any point, anybody can see a history of the project that you're doing, uh, that, a history of the project that you're working on, and it allows you to revert back to a previous version if you don't like the changes that somebody made, or you decide that a previous version was actually better, more functional, or in our case, sounded better. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I think that should be the word qualities, and that's a change I really want the community to look at and consider adopting for this, uh, for this project. So I'll go here, and I need to make a commit. I need to commit this change to the project. You can see down here that GitHub has already pre-populated these fields with some things that it recommends I put. So it says, you know, I should call this commit or name this commit update open org definition. I think that's fine. I'll keep that. 
But what I can do here is add a small description for what this commit con contains so that when people look at it, when they see that I'm making changes, they can see at a glance what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So I, I'll um, type here, I recommend that we change the language in this line. And now what I can do is I can commit those changes. So it's gonna take the change that I made, attach that comment to it, and now you'll see my copy here, it has made that change. And that says qualities. Can you talk about the difference between committing to master and creating a new branch? I can, yep. So that functionality is often um, most useful when you're working directly with the group's project. Uh, so I created my own copy of the document before I started working on it. And so Jason is asking down here at the bottom about uh, creating a new branch or committing directly to the master branch. And you have the option of doing either of these things. When you commit directly to the master branch, what you're doing is you are making changes to the master file. Uh, in this case, I'm the only one with access to this because I made a copy of it and put it in my repo. But let's say I was doing this in the open organization ambassadors repo, then I was making changes right to the document that everybody else had access to. Uh, and so in uh, organizational terms, this is sort of uh, kind of not, <laughs> sort of a, a coding faux pas and not necessarily a best practice community-wise because you're making changes to a master document without asking anybody what they think uh, and just kind of moving ahead. When you create a new branch, what you're doing is you are actually saying, okay, I made these changes to this file, push them back up to so people can see them, but don't overwrite the original. Make a separate copy that people can look at first before we do that. Now, because this repo is mine and nobody else is working on it, I just push to master because it doesn't affect anybody else. So I've made this change and I'm going through my individual copy of the document, I'm working on it here, and I say, okay, you know, I really think that uh, I should notify the other ambassadors that I made changes to this document uh, and that I want them to adopt those changes in the master file. What I can do is I can go uh, to open organization definition, and it shows here that I have made a change, what that's called a commit, that puts me out of sync with the master repository, the master project that the open organization ambassadors are working on. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to request that they incorporate my changes. And that's how, that's another primary function of GitHub is what's called a pull request. I would like the open, organi open organization ambassadors to pull my changes into their master document. I can't do that automatically from here, and I shouldn't want to because uh, decorum indicates that I should ask their opinion first uh, about whether, what they think of my changes. Um, but I will request that they take a look and consider pulling uh, my project into theirs. So what I wanna do is I wanna go right down here to new pull request and click that button. And when I do that, it brings up this screen, which it says uh, it's comparing the changes. So it shows me what is currently in the ambassador's repo on the left, and it shows my modifications on the right. Uh, and what it's doing is it's saying, you are requesting that the master document be changed so that what's on the right becomes the master document and instead of what's on the left. So what I can do is I can, uh, hit commit pull request. I can, as you can see, it updated with my, um, updated here with the title of my pull request and the description that I already wrote. It tells folks in the repository what I'm trying to do. And then I hit create pull request. Okay. And GitHub has already checked it out said that the changes I wanna make aren't gonna override what anybody else is doing. And now we're back in the Open Organization Ambassadors repository. And we can see that when we go into the Open Organization definition, the master document, the one that all the ambassadors are working on, we can see 
that if we go to pull requests up here at the top, we can see there's one outstanding issue. And lo and behold, it's mine. So other ambassadors can look at this now by clicking on it, and they'll see my comment and my title and what I'm trying to do. And they can see line by line the commit I'm trying to make and the changes I'm trying to have accepted. They look just like this. And so what uh, ambassadors can do is, say, is look at these, look at them line by line and say, OK, I like what's going on here. I don't like what's going on. Uh, and then, of course, as is the case with all other uh, things you can do on GitHub, you can have a conversation, which is where these things usually go. And the conversation is the master view here. So people can read my request. They can look at my uh, proposed changes. Uh, and they can start to leave comments here uh, on this pull request, and we can have a discussion. And this is normally how things work on GitHub. You know, somebody proposes a change, or I request that they pull changes into the project, and then people have a discussion about it. Well, I think this is valuable. Well, I don't think this is valuable. Uh, this is where that conversation happens. Not every pull request gets accepted, and some pull requests ultimately get rejected after a good deal of discussion. But what you're doing here is you're saying, I have done some work. I'd like you to review my work, and if you like my work, um, I'd like you to pull those changes into the master document. Uh, and so that's how a pull request works, and that's how uh, you know, the ambassadors can collaborate on some of the work that they're doing right here uh, from GitHub. So that's another important uh, part of um, using GitHub to do our work. Those are really, in terms of GitHub basics, the things that I would say are the most important features that ambassadors need to know about. Uh, a couple other things uh, that you can see here from our new home on GitHub, right from the home page, uh, is that we have uh, a list of the members of the organization. So here are the open, organiza open organization ambassadors who are on GitHub. The open organization ambassadors, uh, by virtue of being an ambassador, one of the perks of the program is that you get to have push access to the repository. So you have that power to go into uh, a document like I just did and make a change to it. A GitHub user who's not a member of the organization can't just come in and click that pencil and start making changes as I did, but GitHub uh, open organization ambassadors on GitHub can do that. Another thing to note here is that as it is sort of like a little social network, you can uh, click on the people tab and see everybody that you're connected to uh, on GitHub, see what they're doing, see what they're up to, leave them private messages, uh, send them uh, notes, send them links and things like that. So this is a place that we can use to uh, collaborate a little bit more and to communicate if you want to use this over email for certain tasks. Uh, sometimes it streamlines people's work if they can use this. Uh, instead of email for leaving notes and leaving messages. And then another thing you can do is, again, because you are uh, ambassadors, you can actually create your own repositories. Uh, and uh, you'll see that I created a new one most recently that I called the Ambassador Boardroom. And so I want to point this out uh, as we wrap up here just as a, a, a sort of a point of order. Uh, this we'll consider our sort of meta repo. It's our, it's our repo about our GitHub presence on uh, for the open organization ambassadors. So uh, what you can see here is when you go into the boardroom, uh, we have several issues that are raised. And uh, it was Chad's recommendation, and I thought a good one, that um, the ambassadors have a place where they can talk about, at a meta level, the, uh, the organization itself and the repo itself. So for example, here we've posted up uh, the project agenda for 2017. This is really a comment about the work that we're doing, and so it went in the boardroom. Uh, I put it here, and people have been discussing it and taking a look at it. Of course, I hyperlinked it, so you can click that and see a copy of it, and that's part of the boardroom. So what the boardroom is for is for discussions about things like, uh, hey, let's have a GitHub tutorial for the ambassadors. Uh, to teach them how to do some of the basic GitHub functions. Well, here it is. And we planned this very uh, seminar today on GitHub. Here's a copy of, the, uh, a copy of the, the outline that we put, that Chad and I put together for this very project. And there's other things on here. You know, Chad is leaving notes about uh, his uh, intentions to write articles. 
and things of that nature. So the boardroom is a place where we can talk about our work, where we can talk about our projects, and where we can leave sort of uh, the, the work of planning what we're doing. Uh, and so that's what the Open Organization Ambassadors boardroom is really for. That's that, that's that repository. Other repositories that we have so far, not in addition to our working definition of the open organization, include um, a description of the ambassador's program itself. We keep that in the repository so that any time people can propose changes to the description of the ambassador's program itself. And the community produced guides to the open organization by Jim Whitehurst. We have the leader's manual, catalyst in chief, and the open organization field guide. All those projects, of course, are public and their source code is hosted by the open organization ambassadors and we uh, manage the version control on those. So that's a little bit about uh, our new home on GitHub, some of the basic functions and how GitHub works and what we can use it for. We have about five minutes remaining. Anybody have any questions? I think I covered everything on my notes. All right, great. Well, we're going to make this video public and we are going to share it so that any incoming ambassadors can look at it and anybody who's currently working can get a better sense of our new home. Welcome to GitHub, everybody. Thanks for your participation and we will see you soon. Thanks, Brian. That was great. Thank you.